If you're new here, my name is Levi. I'm a DIY dad. I do home improvements and modifications to my kids' toys. And today I'm going over uh, what I've done to his Power Wheels. Before we begin, a couple of disclaimers. What I've done to this vehicle voids whatever warranty it comes with and whatever you do to your vehicle or your child's vehicle is your responsibility. Any injuries are on you, not on me or this channel, or certainly the vehicle that you've been modifying. So with that done, let's get into it. First up, traction. These things come with plastic wheels. They spin out on just about everything, including grass, certainly dirt, uh, snow. They don't really go up hills. So what I did to modify that was just stuck a couple of roofing screws in. Very, very simple, very cheap, very quick and easy. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. So as you can see here on the front, I've got them spaced out about every four inches here. On the back here, I've placed quite a bit more. This is rear wheel drive only. I know that there are possibly some four wheel drives, but this is rear, rear wheel drive only. So I put more screws in the back wheels here. I've seen some people paste some rubber tires on here and that certainly would help quite a bit with the traction. The reason I have not done that, frankly, took, would take more time. And we're coming into winter here and our driveway basically becomes a skating rink and I wanted quite a bit of bite. So these provide basically studs for the tires. I wanted to be able to drive during the winter. My hope this spring is to be able to put some rubber tires on this to give it a little bit of, uh, little bit of suspension almost. Um, and give it a little bit more of a real driving feel. Uh, hopefully we'll do that in the spring. Uh, stay tuned for that. One quick note before we leave traction, these are plastic tires, there's no air in them. So putting screws into the tires does not deflate them in any way. Of course, there's a chance you're gonna lose screws into the yard. You could run over uh, or your child could run over their foot or someone else's foot and hurt them. The reason I chose to do this, again, it was quick, cheap, and easy, and our son is pretty responsible, and it's easy enough to have a conversation with him about not running over people's feet. Uh, let's move on. Power. This is probably what a lot of people are wondering about. So for power, uh, this particular toy, it's several years old now, comes with a 12-volt Peg Perego battery. Uh, I chose to override that and instead add some power tool batteries. The ones I used are 20 volt max DeWalt's only because those are the tools that I have and I have a bunch of them lying around. You can get these adapters from Amazon for every tool company and I will leave a link in the description for the ones I use and the ones I would recommend using for the other tools as well. Uh, I will leave links in the description for all the things that I used on this. It is an affiliate link, so that is one way to support the channel. I do earn commissions on those links. So these adapters, you can see a battery fits right in here. And then this is now live. I chose to mount two of these on the bike, one on each side, which I'll show you in just a second. And I wired these in parallel. A quick note about DC wiring, this is a DC unit. I'm not an expert on wiring, I'm not an electrician, I'm not an electrical engineer, but I will go over a couple of basics here real quick. Um, when we talk about DC or direct current, we have uh, voltage or current going in one direction only, uh, going from positive to negative. In this case, we are powering DC motors, two DC motors, one on each wheel, they are 12 volt motors and we're increasing the voltage. There's a bunch of variables that you don't need to know about it, but essentially once you take out all those variables, speed is directly proportional to voltage. The reason I have wired these in parallel, and when I say parallel, I mean I am connecting the positive of one wire to the positive of another wire. So I'm wiring the positives together and the negatives together. The reason I'm doing that is it doesn't change the voltage it changes my capacity for this machine to run for a longer period of time. So I'm combining the run capacity of two of these batteries instead of combining the voltage, which would make it 40 volts. One question people are gonna have is how long this conversion lasts in terms of battery life. I don't know how long an original 12 volt battery lasts because this was not new when we got it, 
but these two of these which are the smallest DeWalt battery which is two amp hours two of these together which is four amp hours last about 40 minutes of continuous mostly continuous driving these are the smallest battery and these are completely beat i've used these for years i would imagine that if we extrapolate the largest size battery which are those big nine amp hour batteries which are gigantic would last about three hours i wouldn't suggest using them as a continuous the batteries will get very hot they're not really meant to to be used that way and you risk burning out the motor burning out wires that sort of stuff so we have our son drive it intermittently he gets off he's helping us with wood etc so you can see there is my adapter i have another one on the other side i drilled a little hole here you can see for the red and black and then wired them underneath i'll flip it over and we'll see what that looks like to mount these connectors what i did was i drilled two small holes in each of these just in the top layer there's a back layer of plastic and I put some epoxy on the back of this and then just took small roofing screws and screwed down through the second layer into the truck and that held really really well it's been about two months now and I've had no issues with that so I have it flipped over now and I'll show you what it looks like. There's a lot more going on here than just the power that I'll explain in a second. But what I've done here is the, so you can see the red and the black come out right here. I've wired it through kind of the stanchions here and I did use heat shrink connectors and heat shrink wiring uh, protectors for all of this. I know that's overkill and someone will probably say that in the comments, but hey, better safe than sorry, I guess. Um, so the red and black from both sides come through this stanchion here. And then they feed through and eventually connect uh, underneath here to the powertrain. So if you have one of the side by sides, the batteries here in the front. So the battery has a quick connect. And what I did was I clipped that quick connect on both ends. One of them is obviously you unplug and you can plug it into the charger. And then the other one that's in here goes to power the actual vehicle. So I clipped that, they are labeled, and I connected my battery connectors for my power tools to that. So red goes to red and then black goes to blue. And then that directly powers this. And there's a little bit more to it and I'm gonna show you what I did to modify that just simple connection. So the simple connector of just putting power to the wheels results in quite a serious jump in power and quite a jolt. Um, this is bad for a couple of reasons. Uh, it might throw your kit off, which is dangerous but also it's bad for the gears and the motors in this. They're not really meant to handle that. They're plastic gears. So to combat that, I put in a variable speed gas pedal. Um, and again, the links for this will be in the description, but it acts like a real gas pedal. So the, the less you push on it, the less it goes. So just a little bit and then So the way I did that was I just ordered this uh, voltage controller that pairs with the variable speed gas pedal online. And it's fairly simple. Um, you're just wiring the power that you've now got from the tool batteries into the voltage regulator and then wiring the uh, actual powertrain or the gear and motor uh, unit directly to that as well. Um, and then you just plug it in the way I managed to get this new pedal in there that little guy right there What I did was I just cut out the old gas pedal and then epoxy this new pedal in and you can see So there's a little connector uh, control That then goes to this which is my voltage regulator It's hard to see that but that gives me a voltage reading and it also lets me change how much power is actually going to the wheels. So the, the combination of the voltage regulator and the soft start um, or the variable speed gas pedal 
do a couple of things that prevents stripping of the gears, but it also lets me dial back the power a little bit from 20 volts. I am keeping it at 15 volts. The reason for that is the gear housing and the motors are really only meant for 12 volts. And I've heard stories of these catching fire, failing, that sort of stuff. And so I'm increasing the power a little bit to help him get up hills and to have a little bit more speed, but not all the way up to 20 volts because catch fire, I don't want it to break. I don't want to have to replace the motors. Um, so this kind of gives me a happy medium um, and lets me monitor the voltage itself. Um, there is a way to put in a low voltage cutoff. Uh, I don't particularly care about draining these batteries. These are junk batteries anyways. Um, and it's pretty obvious if you're hanging around, uh, the machine starts to get slower and you can just take the batteries out. That takes care of the basics. Let's move on to the auxiliaries now, the lights and the power dump. Uh, the reason I wanted lights on here, well, is because my son asked for it and I thought this was relatively easy. So what I did was I took the old battery that uh, was now kind of sitting in the front and useless and I hooked that, took the positive and negative, wired those up to the now full 12 volt system that is powering lights, a power dump, and the underglow system. So these are lights, pretty sweet. Uh, this is to allow our sun to drive when it's dark. It gets dark here at about four o'clock in the winter time. Um, pretty, pretty, this was pretty easy to wire up. So ordered these online, just regular 12 volt lights, uh, nothing special here. Um, you can see I, so I did drill two holes in the top of the hood here and then fed uh, the bolts through, fed the wires through and all of the wiring is here underneath. And so this is wired to this 12 volt battery right here in the front. And then this comes with, they actually came with the switch that I installed. I just drilled out the dashboard and put that switch right in. I'll show you what that looks like. So this is the switch right here. You can see it gets brighter. So the lights are, are wired directly to the 12 volt system with the underglow kit. So the underglow kit is just four green neon lights. I chose green just because his favorite color is green and mounted them on the underside. I wired them directly to the same switch that controls these. So when the lights are on, the lights are on. When the lights are off, the lights are off. So here we are on the underside again. You can see these are mounted on a piece of wood. And the reason for this is I didn't want the screws going all the way through and jabbing his little feet. And these are the back two underglow lights. Again, these are all wired together in parallel. So they're using the exact same voltage and hooked to the lights that go to the front of the truck. And again, all wired to the same 12 volt system. And that also is powering this, the piston for the dump body. And while we're here, let me show you that. This took the most modification by far, probably not something that is a quick and easy job. This took me a, a couple of days to figure out. So what I had to do is I added in framing. This is pieces of PT post, and then this is a piece of cedar framing here. And then I've got shelf brackets here that is holding this at a 90 degree angle. And this is where, this is where the piston connects to. So this is a piston, again, I ordered online. I ordered this too long and had to modify it to get it shorter. If you want to do this yourself, you need an eight inch piston, a 12 volt eight inch. Uh, it's actually called a linear actuator and there will be a link to one of those in the description. And I wired this again to the same 12 volt system. The linear actuator for the dump bed here uh, was a bit of a bear to hook up. Um, so what I did was I took the old piece that came with this. Um, there's a like a little lever piece and a green rod that helps support it. It was absolutely impossible for my son to use. This is meant to dump and it has a nice tailgate. It's just that he couldn't operate it by himself and he loves dump trucks. So of course I'm gonna make a dump truck. So the 12 volt system again is wired in parallel to the original battery along with the lights and along with the underglow kit. There's gonna be a couple other things I use the 12 volt battery for in the coming days. Um, and this handy little switch came with the linear actuator. 
I had to cut out a couple of uh, bits of the plastic here in the middle to get this thing to fit. I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see I had to modify this a little bit to make the space a little bit bigger. And then this connector piece right here, I ended up going through. So I drilled a couple of holes to put the connector piece to that linear actuator on. Word of caution, if you are gonna be doing this, obviously there are some pinch points here. You wanna make sure that your child knows how to operate this safely. They have to get off the rig and they have to keep their hands and feet clear of this and other hands and feet clear. The last thing I did is I rewired where this connects. The front portion of this is very difficult for not just a kid, but for an adult to get off. And if you're gonna be charging this every day that your child is using it, it got very annoying to charge this. So what I did was I rerouted uh, the charger for this. I just took the one that I clipped off when I changed it to a 20 volt and then wired it to in parallel to the 12 volt system. And now it just plugs in right here. Quite a bit easier to plug in. Last but not least, we added a trailer hitch. We have a garden cart for the lawnmower. Arlo wanted to drag a trailer, so this was a pretty easy upgrade. So I just took a two by four, painted it black, drilled some holes in it, and then again used roofing screws to attach it just into the plastic here, and then just one big eye hook, and this can latch right onto the garden cart. He absolutely loves it, and Good practice, a lot of people don't know how to back up a trailer and he's learning from the age of three, which I think is great. He's gonna be better than me, probably by the time he's five. If this is a project that you're hoping to take on to improve your kid's ride, I hope this gives you a little bit of confidence and answers some of the nuts and bolts. If you have questions, please leave them down in the comments. In the coming videos, I am going to try my best to add a snow plow to this. And then in the springtime, we're gonna add a winch to help lug downed trees out of the way. Um, the reason I spend so much time doing this is my son loves this thing, but he also loves to work and we are trying to teach him uh, what it takes to live out in the woods like we do. Uh, it takes hard work and not only that, it takes hard work to get through life successfully. So we're trying to teach him those values through fun. This is a toy for him, he loves it. And as long as he loves using it, I'm gonna keep working on it with him. Hope you guys enjoy. And if you wanna see the future upgrades, hit that like button and subscribe for me.